Welcome to Jones Knows. We're doing five steps to installing Duralex properly in under five minutes. Make sure you stay to the end. Tim's tip of the day will ensure you don't damage this floor while you're installing it. So beautiful, you and me. We meant to be. Step number one, where and how to start. You want to pick the longest, straightest wall. I also like to have light flow down the floor and I also like to, every time I walk into a room to be looking down the planks. Once you've determined that, now let's get started. You want to start with three to four different length planks. Each one of them should be eight to 12 inches shorter than the last. Also, make sure you mix up the colors. You don't want to have them all the same color if you have a multicolor floor. Then, if you have a jam, slide them under a jam and you're ready to go. Step number two, how to lay a plank and close an end joint properly. You're gonna need a rubber mallet. If you don't have one, stop the video, go out and buy one. Don't even attempt to lay one of these floors without one. So once you've got your rubber mallet and you're ready to go, you notice that I tap down on top of the board. That's where the two planks come together. Once you slide your long joint in, you can wiggle it back and forth, but you have to drop the end joint on top of the other plank's end joint and tap it down. You can't close it with your hand. You have to use a rubber mallet. It's real easy, but make sure it's directly above the other board. Don't hit it down the wrong place, it won't close. Step number three, how to mark and cut boards. No need for a tape measure. Flip your board backwards so the big tongue is facing the big tongue. And mark where the two boards come together. Allow an eighth to a quarter of an inch for expansion but it's the easiest way to mark a board. You don't have to measure. Once you've put your mark, then you're gonna to wanna to take out a speed square. Make sure you have a brand new razor blade in your knife. This is really important if you wanna cut through the top layer. Brand new razor blade, run it through a couple times, then flip the board over backwards and hit the board right where you scored it with the knife. As long as you hit it exactly where you scored it on the back of the board, it will break cleanly. If it has a pre-attached padding like the Duralux, you'll need to cut through the padding. Step four, everybody's favorite, door jams. Use a scrap board and an oscillating saw to cut the jam exactly where you need it. Now, let's take the board you wanna cut, put it in place exactly where you want it, just put it one row out. And with what I like to call a marking board, trace where the door jam is gonna hit your board. Draw lines exactly for the sides and for the depth. Now, once you get it cut, it's time to install it. This is often the hardest part of a door jam cut. These boards are meant to be installed on an angle. We can't install it on an angle since we have to slide it under. So we have to carefully tap and slide it into place. This is where it takes a lot of patience because you don't want to break the tongue of this board or the boards around it or you won't be able to get the next boards into place. This Duralux actually installs really nicely around door jams, so you won't have too much trouble if you take your time. And once you get it into place, the last thing you're gonna do, just like a regular board, is to close the end joint. Take your time so you don't break the end joint, and tap it down just like you would with a regular board. Now, if you're on the other side of the door jam, we have a trick where we use our pry bar and a rubber mallet at the same time. It helps if you have two people, because one of them can pressure on the board with a pry bar, while the other uses the mallet to hit it into place. But it's really important to keep constant pressure and make sure where you're putting the pry bar on that board, that is the last board or scrap board. Don't put it on an edge that you need to connect to. Step number five making our final row cuts, or what we like to call our rips. Take the board you're gonna cut and place it above the previous rows board, and then with a full board, or what we call a marking board, trace where it hits the board. Now my son's all about speed, so he traces it with his knife and eliminates the one step of marking it and then having to cut it once it's marked, so he does it all in one step. But if you feel more comfortable, you can use a marker, take it off, and then use a straight edge. Now he's just going to 
snap it with his hands but I show you here that you can also do the same thing like you do with a uh, end cut and flip it over and hit it and then of course cut through your padding and then to put it in we're just gonna use a pry bar and then once you pull it in make sure you tap it down well, we made it through and it's time for Tim's tip of the day. If you take nothing else with you, understand that when you're putting these floors together, never use a tapping block. Use a piece of scrap flooring and hit it in. Tapping blocks damage the edge of the floor. I don't use them. I don't suggest you use them. I hope you've enjoyed the video. I hope it was useful. Please subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. And of course, all of our reviews on vinyl and other flooring. Thank you. You and me, we meant to be in the great outdoors, forever free.